Picture this, you're a YouTuber that spent years critiquing wristwatches from the very cheap to the very expensive. Even to the point of mentioning that if you are a micro brand bringing a dive watch to the market, it better be amazing or it will just disappear with all the other hundreds of boring samey options. Now you bring your own brand to the micro brand market and it's of all things a dive watch. It better be good, right? I might be the only YouTuber to date that haven't reviewed this one, but I have noticed a few people are moving theirs on now, which is normal for us watch people. So an April 24 review might still be appropriate, and thank you to Jody for sending me one to film today. Jody at Just One More Watch is an inspiration to most of us watch people I'd say. He certainly was to me, and I enjoy his content immensely. That said, few microbrands get it right on their first release, but many do of course, and then struggle with the second release. The second release has just been shared, but the origin is what we're here for today, and here's a short review summary before we get started. This is a very safe release, and perhaps not terribly exciting if I was to be pushed to say anything negative, but it is incredibly good value, and every single detail is done extremely well. The attention to detail here is class leading and is impressive to say the least. You can definitely tell that the team behind this have handled hundreds of watches and have learned something from all of those. I have no reason to say this other than genuinely meaning every word. And if you want to see why I rate it so highly, keep watching and let's go through the Erebus together. It shouldn't come as a surprise that the dimensions of this piece is all Goldilocks. Again, a perfect first release that doesn't take any chances, which is exactly what you should do in your first edition. It's 40.7mm wide and 47.1mm light to lug. Lug width is 20mm and the thickness is 12.5mm. It's water resistance to 200m and weighs 170 grams sized up for me. Getting up close, this dial is a matte textured black, no shine, no fuss. The printed logo and wordmark is of good quality, and so is the model name of origin and the water resistance in red. The printed indices are obviously a little reminiscent of the Tudor Pelagos, but a fair bit smaller than that model, at least at the marks in between the 12, 3, 6 and 9. The 6 is slightly cut off to fit in a date complication, which is a white on black that's reasonably easy to see. A discrete red square in the minute track ties in with the red print on the water resistance and also the square and needle seconds hand. An old trick is the blacked out center details of the seconds and hour and minute hand that gives the impression of floating. Speaking of which, these hands are large and extremely legible. I feel like I could make out the time here if it was mounted on a flagpole, is that clear? But even more so since it is white on black in this model. The bezel is all loomed and the font in use is quite Submariner-like. It lines up perfectly and honestly, how could it not being a YouTuber's favourite complaint? And the action is really very good and feels very precise in your hands. It holds in place a flat sapphire crystal with layers of AR coating on the inside. A large screw down crown that's more than adequately protected is easy to grip and signed and it complements a case that's all brushed 316L stainless steel. And what I particularly like here is how thin it is, it fits the wrist perfectly. One important point for me that's often overlooked is that there are no sharp edges anywhere. Even where there needs to be one for a visual sharpness, it's not sharp to the touch. The longish lugs too seems to complement any strap options. Turning the wash over and we get a deep Erebus logo that yes, does very much remind me of the Helm Vanuatu as others have pointed out, but why would you indeed not take inspiration from one of the biggest microbrand success stories of all time? Behind the screen case back hides the Seiko NH35, which is not just a workhorse of a movement, but it's fairly accurate usually as well, easy to regulate, and extremely easy to source a replacement for should you want to or need to. It's a smart option in my book. The H-Link bracelet is a very good one too, all brushed and surprisingly delicate. 
It contours to the wrist nicely and is a very comfortable wear. Bonus is quick release spring bars, so if you do get the optional strap pack, swapping them over is a 20 second job. What we also get is a quick adjust system built into the fully mill clasp that is perhaps a tad fiddly, but how good is it that we get these features at this price level these days? Here's a look at the optional strap pack available from Erebus when you order yours. The loom is, no surprises, very good. Let's take a look. The Erebus Origin does draw inspiration from some very good micro brand and large brands. And the worst you can say about it is that it's perhaps not the most exciting of designs. But I know there are brands out there that would be extremely happy if they were anywhere near such an impressive launch. And from my perspective, the quality on offer here is extremely good. Not just at this money, but at three to four times this money even. My personal guess is that it's close to a loss leader since surely the margins here must be razor thin considering the quality choices all the way down to the excellent screws in use on the bracelet. This is a very good first release where all the usual bugbears are addressed and at an excellent price of around 500 Australian dollars, depending on how you configure yours. Jody and his business partner capitalized on so much goodwill from their community. And the good news is, they both respected and rewarded this community for their trust, and I think we're all very excited to see what will be coming over the next few years, especially when they're in a position to be able to take some risks on original designs. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you next time.